Hello and welcome to Icky Chic Designs. This is Linda. So happy to have you with me for this uh, video in uh, the ongoing series that we're doing here, the challenge for the coffee table slow stitch book. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll be doing that all year. Uh, we'll be trying to finish up our pages by October and then do our cover and have our book finished by the end of this year. So it's a big project in size and also in work, but it's going to be a very fun project. And also if you have uh, slow stitch projects, smaller ones that you've already done and you want to incorporate it, that'd be perfect too. It's a good way to keep them in one place, to keep them safe and protected is to put them in a book. Okay, this was our first spread, which uh, I finished in, in my last uh, video, uh, but I wanted to show you what I've done on the other two pages. Now, I kind of gave an audition of what I was going to do to those pages, and uh, some of it I stayed true to, some of it I changed. Remember, there are no... Slow Stitch Police, we can do whatever we want, and if we can throw things out, and we can twist them around, and we can turn them upside down, and we can just do whatever we want. So, anyway, it's not exactly the way I laid it out. I changed it. <clears throat> so, this would be the inside front when you open it up. Okay, the center of the book. All right, you'll probably remember this page with these flowers super colorful and I am not finished with this page or the back page yet I'm still stitching on it but I want I've got far enough where I think you can get a good view of what I my vision is here and what I'm doing I'm just beginning to go around the edges I've got a little bit here done and across here done very rough can you see that? Very rough. My stitching is staying true to my raggy look, and I like that. And I try to, you know, I don't just just work real hard at making that way, but I try real hard not to be precise, not to be exact, not to be really neat. And so it just comes out the way I like it. Um, it this piece here was already done, and I just incorporated this piece here into this page, okay? Uh, I came down this side with some yarn trim, and then came back with little squares of fabric to help get me a border on that side. And as you can see, I haven't sewn my two sides together, I haven't enclose this edge yet. I put some black yarn down through here and I'm going to talk about these this black and these darker colors here in a minute. But this page is almost done. I have a little bit more stitching to secure the inside and then of course I have the outside. But basically as far as um, design embellishment decoration this page is done it was pretty busy on its own very colorful and i really liked that but uh, i won't i won't be doing too much more to this okay so now the back page is this now i haven't gotten real far into this one yet basically it's 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 uh, tacked this piece is sewn on, but I haven't done any of the border pieces and I haven't done any of the stitching, uh, a little bit of uh, connecting stitching that I'm going to do in the sides here. And I may do a little, little bit more outline on these leaves. Uh, I don't know yet. I, I'll, I'll know when I get there. But you see how dark this fabric is. We don't want to be afraid of dark because really d dark colors are our friends when it comes to art and decor and things like that. When we get really <coughs> colorful, 
it is beautiful, but it's overwhelming to our eyes and our brain. And we, you know, we just almost want to explode because we have so much going on around us. So the dark colors that are very carefully placed around, especially in, let's say, um, interior designer, uh, you'll always see an uh, item or two that's black because that black grounds the color. It gives your eye something to rest on and while it travels around through the colorful environment. Same way in our art, the black draws your eye, the dark will draw your eye, and it gives it somewhere to rest and then you can go back and explore. Now you don't think about this consciously. Uh, your brain isn't telling you, okay, I got a rest, I've had too much color. But that is how it acts. Color stimulates. And so it just, like I said, it's an overload. And if we don't ground it with something, and most of the time we'll do that with these darker elements, then um, we get very tired or we get overwhelmed and we just want to put it away. Uh, neutrals do the same thing. Uh, n good grays and browns will do the same thing. Uh, even dark, colorful colors. Let's say this color here is very dark and, and I have used it for stitching around, for outlining, uh, sewing in the background here it's a very dark color it's very colorful but it plays off as a dark and so it doesn't like explode our brain i hope i'm making sense here between this and this there's so much color that if and this center part here that if if i didn't ground it in some way you you really couldn't appreciate the color because you'd just be overwhelmed and you'd want to get off this page. <laughs> so this way, the darks are our, our friends. And if we use them correctly, they will enhance the color. They will ground the color. And they will give us a sense of stability, a sense of purpose, a sense of that this was planned out and well executed. So don't be afraid of darks. Use them, and darks I'm talking about, dark threads, dark yarns, dark fabrics, darks <clears throat> in anything that you're using. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies are acting up again. Uh, because you need them. If you work in color, you need, you need these grounding colors, and those are your darks. So I hope that made sense, and uh, for you today and that you'll be able to play with those. Uh, a lot of people you will see, they uh, they never go to a dark. They just, they're afraid of it in a sense. They don't know what to do with it or they think it won't look good, but actually it enhances their work. Okay, what else can we talk about here? The, uh, like I said, I haven't uh, finished this yet. I'm really liking what is going on here. Uh, when this, like I said, if this were the center of the book, this would be the center page. But now this is my first uh, signature. It's pretty, I don't know if I can get another four, I don't think I'm gonna try that. I think I'm gonna leave the four pages each, the one fold over as a signature and then sew these signatures in one at a time into the the book itself because it's pretty thick. Uh, time you get all the stuff I pile on these pages, uh, it's pretty thick. So <clears throat> I'm loving this. It's very raggy. It's very rough. It's very primitive and in, in a lot of ways. And I, and I really like that look. I like that look. Now you may not, but again. My philosophy is be scrap happy. If I'm not happy, why would in the world would I put this much work into something? And uh, so I'm doing what I like, and that's what I encourage you to do. 
also to do what you like. And it's always going to come out better because it's going to be so much of you in it. And, you know, our art reveals a lot about us. Uh, from my art, you can tell I love color. You can tell I love, uh, what's the word, Spont spontaneity. Uh, whatever happens, happens. And I don't like to purpose and pre-plan and, and all that kind of stuff. You can tell that by my my art. And so my slow stitching is just, is just something that I love to do. And it gives me a way to use my scraps. It gives me a way to express my love of color. It gives me a way to practice designing. And, you know, it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel very scrap happy. <laughs> okay, so here is where I'm at so far. And uh, I will get this, this one finished and uh, get a start on the next signature. Uh, and then I will make another video. But I hope that you're th if you haven't started along with me, that you will at least think about it. And begin now, as I've said, you that you do not have to make this size of a book, uh, but make something of it's a coffee table size book challenge. And what I really mean by that, make a book big enough that when you set it on a side table or coffee table, it's going to draw some attention. People are going to want to pick it up, they're going to want to look through it, and you're just going to delight your guests with your. Uh, hand stitching and also remember that this is a slow stitch book but if you're a crocheter if you're a cross stitcher if you're a knitter if you're any of those things uh, by all means incorporate them into your work I have a few pieces that are partly uh, machine sewn and so for instance let's say uh, where are they Let's say this little uh, heart, if I wanted to use it, well, this is machine quilted. and uh, But that wouldn't stop me from using it in this slow stitch project, okay? Because the majority of the book is slow stitched. And that's the important thing. But use, use any part of your stitchery to enhance your book the way you want it. If you want to work in little motifs, well, by all means, do that. And then just make pages out of them, however you want to do them. Be great for a sampler. Uh, put sampler pages in here or just plain fabric collage pages would be beautiful in a book. So just use your imagination, jump into the challenge. We're just really getting started and we have a whole year to complete this. Be sure to use the hashtag that's in the description if you post. Uh, a comment about this challenge and if you don't mind and you do like the challenge please uh, spread it around to your friends and and uh, in your posts so that on Instagram and Facebook and other places and send them uh, here to Inky Chic so they can jump in with us okay I would appreciate that also if I'm trying very hard to give value for the time you spend here with me and if I've done that I would really appreciate you giving my channel uh, a like these videos a like and also subscribe and again uh, let your friends know that it's a channel worth watching okay until next time I hope you're all staying scrap happy because you can tell that I am bye bye